If you'd like to attack your friends and foes, hop into Roblox Studio and let's get coding. As you guys probably guessed in the intro, today we're going to be making swords in Roblox Studio, so let's get right into that, shall we? Inside of the workspace over here, you can click on the plus icon to the right of that, and then go ahead and add in a tool. This tool, I'm going to press F2, or you can click on it, or you can go into the properties and change the name of it. And I'm just going to change the name of it to sword, just like that. And now we're going to need a part. So inside of this part button right here, you can go ahead and click on that. So this will be our blade for our sword. I'm going to flatten it out, make it look more like a sword blade. Something like this. And now this is where we can put it inside of our sword tool. And let's go ahead and make a little handle for this. So I'm going to control D to duplicate this blade. And then I'm going to scale it down to where it's about on the end of the blade. And now if you hold control and scale in one direction, it will also scale it in the other direction. So I'm going to do that to make a little guard for the blade. And now we get to duplicate this. And then scale it down on the blue circles. And then scale it out this way for a handle. And there's our sword. So now we get to actually name all these pieces. This first part up here, I'm going to name the blade because it is the blade. This one, I'm going to name the guard because it's the guard of the blade. And this one, I'm going to be the guard handle. So now that we've actually got our sword, we're going to need something that will actually let the player hold the sword in their hand. So this is where we're going to go into the avatar tab right here. And we're going to add in a new rig. So in the rig builder, click on that. And then click on an R15 or R6 block rig, depending on what you're using. I'm going to put this here and then rotate it around. Just so it's facing our sword. So now that we've got this, we want to make it so that the player will be holding the sword uh, vertically in their hand. So what we're going to want to do is add in a new part right on top of it and this part we're going to add in a decal inside of it so if you click on the plus and search for a decal that will show up and right where the orange face is on the front here that will be the front face that start off with as you can see in the properties this orange thing right here is the front of the part so we want that part to be facing the other way so I'm going to grab the part Press Ctrl and 4 to go into Rotate. Rotate that 180 degrees around. And now we get to scale this part down a lot, as deep as it can go. And we just put this right at the tip, right on the edge of our sword handle, just like this. And then we can also rotate it on the blue axis 90 degrees so that it will be facing up instead of down and that will be our sword now we can delete the decal on this part and let's name it to handle now let's put this handle inside of our sword and the rest of these blade and guards and guard handle we can put inside of our handle now it's very important that with this handle you use a capital H otherwise Roblox won't see it as a handle and it will not work so in order to make sure all these pieces don't fall apart immediately, we need to add in a weld constraint. So if you click on the plus icon to the right of the handle and then add in a weld constraint. So now part zero is going to be the part that we want to attach all the parts to, which will be the handle up here. You can click on that and then click on handle and it will show up in the part zero. And then for part one, we go on to one of our parts right here, which can either be blade, guard or the guard handle. I'm going to go with a blade, and now we can duplicate the weld constraint with Ctrl and D, and change part 1 to guard, and then duplicate it again, and change part 1 back to guard handle. So now that all of our pieces are welded together, we have our sword here, and we can get animating our sword. So, if we go into the avatar tab once again, and then go over here to the animation editor, we can open that up. And with our dummy right here, we can click on that. And Roblox is going to ask us to name our animation right now. 
I'm going to name this to Sword Swing R15. Now this does work with R6, I have tested it. I'll show you guys how to do it though after this. So as soon as you have your little dummy right here, you can click on the little plus icon right here underneath the time frame and add in the entire body of the dummy. And on the three dots to the left, make sure that your animation priority is set to action. So now we've got that over here with our dummy, we can make our little swing animation. So on the first frame, I'm going to have him start in a swinging position almost, kind of like this. And then about the 0 0.06 second mark, I'm going to just bring his arm all the way across, like this. So you can kind of slash at whoever is trying to get him. And that is actually perfect for a sword swing. So now we get to move his arm back to as close as we can to where it was before. Just like that. So now we have his sword swing. And I just eliminated the other keyframe. Make sure you move it over to like 0, 09 or so. And then make sure you reposition it, reanimate it. So there's our little sword swing right there. You can feel free to animate this to your heart's delight and make it look as cool as you possibly can. I'm just going to leave it as this for now for the sake of the tutorial to show you guys how to do these things. So now that we have our animation made and our animation priority is set to action, we can go and click on the three dots on the left here again and then click on publish to Roblox. This little window should pop up where you get to name your animation, add a description to it if you want, and even change the creator of the animation, which is good if you're not a solo developer or you're working in a group. But I'm not doing that, however, so I'll just be leaving it as me, and I'll submit. So now after this is loading, there will be a little ID right up here next to the this icon. Now. You can either copy this icon here, or you can go to their website and copy it from the URL bar. Otherwise, I'm going to click on the close button right here, and I can close the animation editor now. And now inside of our sword, if I close the dummy real quick, there's a little plus icon to the right of that. So if we click on this and then add in an animation, just like that, we can put paste our animation ID into the animation ID property of the animation instance itself inside of our sword. And now that we have our animation, we can actually get scripting our sword. So I'm going to add in a script to this sword. And this is where we need to make a few variables, but not local variables. It's just going to be tool equal to script.parent. And let's go ahead and make a function real quick. So we're going to do function attack. And this attack function is not going to take any parameters as of yet. And we're going to get our animation. So this will be local anim will be equal to tool wait for child animation. And now we need to get the humanoid from the tool. So let's say local humanoid. Well, not from the tool, from the player, but through the tool, if that makes sense. Let's go ahead and grab our sword right here and drag it into starter pack so I can show you guys what I mean by that. So basically what starter pack does is it takes all of its contents that's within it, whether it be a sword, a rocket launcher, whatever, and it places it inside of the player's character. So since we already have, since the sword will be in the player's character already, we basically already have access to their humanoid and any other body part we would want. Because if we get our humanoid right here, and set this equal to script, so we're getting our script, and then if we were to add dot parent, that would be up to the sword, and then if we were to get to dot parent again, that would lead us to the player's character that has the sword. And now all we'd have to do is say wait for child humanoid to access their humanoid. So that's an easy and simple way of getting the player's humanoid from them through a sword, which is pretty cool. So now let's get our anim track. If I zoom in real quick. So our local anim track will be equal to humanoid colon load animation with a capital L and a capital A. Now you can make sure you put parentheses like this right here and then load our anim inside of the parameters of these parentheses. 
Now that we have that, we can tell our anim track to go ahead and play for us right there. And I'm going to put a zero right in between here to make sure it starts at the frame zero. And so, yes, this is actually our attack function that will play the animation. But now we need to actually make sure it plays when we attack with the sword. So we're going to say tool dot activated. We're going to connect attack just like that. We're not making a new function, just connecting our attack function whenever our tool gets activated. So now let's go ahead and test it by closing the script and clicking on play. So now inside the game I've got my blade right here. My handle that we set up earlier, the little one pixel by one pixel block that we have right there is what I'm holding on to at the moment. And if I click, you can see my animation will start to play that I made. So we have our animation working now, but we're going to want to debounce so that players can't absolutely spam it like this. So if we go ahead and click stop and go back into our sword script, let's get making that debounce. So up here in line two, I'm going to say debounce equals to nil. So it won't be existent right there. But if we say if debounce equals equals to nil, then right up here, we're creating a new if statement. And we can just copy these four or five lines of code technically since there's a space right here. But if we just cut these lines of code and paste them right up here, now our debounce has to be nil in order for us to attack. And then we're going to set our debounce equals to true after the animation plays. And then we're going to wait the 0 0.09 seconds that our animation was. And then I'm going to set the debounce back to nil. Now, it's something as simple as that that will make a debounce, and now we should add some damage to it. So let's go ahead and say tool.handle.blade.touched connect function. Now, you can, if you don't have a blade and you're just using a single mesh part for your sword, which would be from Blender, you can just use the handle.touched. It won't affect the player that's wielding it at all. So yeah, you can keep that in mind, and this function is going to take the parameter of hit. So now we need to get our player variable, which will be player, local player, is equal to game.players, get player from character, hit.parent. So we have our player now, and if it is our player, and our debounce equals equals to true, then we're going to go ahead and say player.character. Wait for child humanoid, and then we're gonna get their health property, and we're gonna minus equals about three health or so from them, just like this. So now, whenever we have our debounce, which is equals to true, and our animation is playing, we can go ahead and deal damage, three damage exactly, but it's gonna account over time for quite a bit of damage. So now, if we hit play, let's go ahead and test out the new things that we just added such as the debounce. One thing I did keep in mind though is that we're gonna need to run a server to test and one thing I did notice that my debounce isn't working. Let's go into the view and then output to see what is going on. Alright so one thing I realized that my debounce was working but I just set it to an extremely fast number. Instead of doing 0 0.9 seconds I did 0 0.09 seconds. So that was the problem why my debounce wasn't technically working so now I'm going to click on play as you can see now I can only click every 0 0.9 seconds you can change the speed of that to whatever fast or slow you want but this is working fine for me let's start a server to test out the damage if I press stop and then go over to the test tab right up here I can start a local server with two players now you can change however many players you want in this drop down menu but I'm going to choose two and then click on start. So after eventually loading, you will join in with a sword and another player that looks exactly like you. So as you can see, when you try and walk through them and all, you won't actually be able to attack them. But if you actually swing your sword, you'll see it will do damage. So yeah, this is how you make a sword in Roblox Studio. If you'd like it to function better, I'd recommend that you go ahead and turn off Can Collide. So now one thing to remember is that you are, if you are making an R6 sword animation for this, you need to go into the game settings and then go over to avatar and then change the avatar type to R6. 
So that will actually make the player spawn in with the R6 animations, the R6 everything. And that will work perfectly for them, but as for R15, you can leave it on R15. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video as much as I did, make sure you subscribe and like this video down below. Leave a comment what you'd like to see next. Goodbye.